sixth grade module two lesson one problem set find the value of each of the following in its simplest form number one so we're going to turn these into multiplication problems to make them simpler to solve so one third remember divided by one fourth or divided by four means the same as times one fourth so we would get one twelfth two fifths divided by 4, or times 1 fourth, is 2 twentieths, and you can reduce that to 1 tenth. 4 sevenths divided by 4, I'm going to change that to times 1 fourth, equal to 4 twenty-eighths, and we can divide both of those by 4, we'll get 1 28 divided by 4 is 7, 1 seventh. 2 fifths divided by 3 or times 1 third is equal to 2 fifteenths, and that cannot be simplified. 5 sixths divided by 5 would be times 1 fifth, 5 thirtieths, and we can divide both of those by 5 over 5, so that would make it 1. Sixth. Five eighths divided by ten or times one tenth is five eightieths. We can divide both of those by five and we will get one and eighty divided by five is sixteen. One sixteenth. Six sevenths divided by three or times one third is six twenty first. I can divide both 6 and 21 by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 21 divided by 3 is 7, so 2 sevenths. 10 eighths divided by 5. 10 eighths times 1 fifth would be 10. 8 times 5 is 40 eighths. We can divide both of those by 10 or just cancel out the zeros. You get 1 fourth. And then 26 divided by 2, or times 1 half, is 20 twelfths. We can divide both of those by, let's see, 4? Yeah. 20 divided by 4 is 5. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So we get 5 thirds, which is actually 1 and 2 thirds. Okay. Number four, forced loads of stone weigh two-thirds a ton. Find the weight of one load of stone. So we want to take this two-thirds and divide it into four equal parts so that we know how much one of them weighs. So that would be the same as doing two-thirds times one-fourth, or two-twelfths. We can divide both of those by two and get one-sixth ton each. Number five, what is the width of a rectangle with an area of 5 eighths inches squared and a length of 10 inches? So we know that the area is 5 eighths. Well, first of all, we know that area equals length times width. So if we know that area is 5 eighths, and we know that the length is 10 times what? So we're looking for this missing piece. So we can figure that out by doing 5 eighths divided by 10 or 5 eighths times 1 tenth. 5 times 1 is 5. 8 times 10 is 80. So we get 5 eightieths, but we could reduce that. Divide by 5 over 5 is equal to 1 16th of an inch. So the rectangle was 10 inches long by 1 16th of an inch wide. Number 6. Lennox ironed a fourth of the shirts over the weekend. She plans to split the remainder of the work equally over the next five weekends. What fraction of the shirts will Lennox iron each day after school? 
Okay, so she ironed a fourth of them over the weekend, and she's going to split the re remainder of the work equally over the next five equal weekend evenings. So first of all, if she ironed one fourth, that means that the remainder of the work would be three fourths. So she has three fourths left, and she's going to split that between five weekends. So three fourths divided by five, not weekends, evenings. So three fourths times one fifth would be equal to three twentieths. So she's going to iron three twentieths each day. If Lennox had 40 shirts, how many shirts will she need to iron on Thursday and Friday? So for two days worth, that would be 3 twentieths plus 3 twentieths on Thursday and Friday. So that's 6 twentieths. And she has 40 shirts. So we can do 6 twentieths times 40. We have 40 over 1. So 6 times 40 is 240 divided by 20. I'm going to cancel those out. So we have 24 over 2, and 24 divided by 2 is equal to 12. So she's going to need to um, iron 12 shirts. Number 7. Bo paid bills with half of his paycheck and put one-fifth of the remainder in savings. The rest of his paycheck he divided equally among the college accounts of his three children. What fraction of his paycheck went into each child's account? So he paid bills with half and then put one-fifth of the remainder in savings. So we know that he paid with half, and if we want to know what one-fifth of the remainder is, the remainder would be half. So we want to find one-fifth of one-half, which means we can do one-fifth times one-half and get one-tenth. So that is the savings. And so that means, let's see. So we're trying to figure out what fraction of his paycheck went into each of his child's account. So the rest of his paycheck, he divided equally among the college accounts of his three children. So if he had one half that he spent on bills, plus he spent another tenth on savings, that would be one half is equal to five tenths plus one tenth, or six tenths. So six tenths was used for bills, plus savings, or we can make that three-fifths. Now the rest, he divided his, he divided between his three kids' um, college accounts. So we can even draw a picture of that. So, let's see, he used three-fifths for bills and savings. So what was left was this two-fifths for kids. Now he needs to divide that equally into two pieces. Or sorry, not two pieces. Three pieces because he has three kids. So we have for each kid for just this first kid, we would have one, two pieces out of a total, one, two, three, four, five, six, 15. So each kid got two fifteenths of his bank account into their college account. Another way we could have done that was taking the remainder that he had left, the two fifths, and dividing it into three equal pieces or doing two-fifths times one-third, and we would get two-fifteenths also. Okay, part B, if Bo deposited $400 in each child's account, how much money was in Bo's original paycheck? So it's saying that $400 is equal to two-fifteenths. 
So I'm going to figure out, I know if $400 is 2 fifteenths, I can figure out 1 fifteenth by dividing that by 2. So $200 would be equal to 1 fifteenth, and I want to figure out 15 fifteenths. I'm going to do 200 times 15. we get $3,000. So Bo originally was paid $3,000.